Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to my Robinhood portfolio. For this video, I would like to talk about value investing, at least basic value investing. I just put out a video talking about Ford and why I like Ford, and in doing so, I talked a little bit about value investing and some of the metrics that make Ford a great long-term or buy and hold stock. So I thought I'd just kind of go in depth a little bit more about basic value investing describing some of the metrics and using Wells Fargo and Company as an example. So value investing is essentially trying to find a stock that is undervalued compared to its peers. And in doing so, there's a couple of different metrics value investors take a look at. Uh, one is the P.E. ratio and the other one is earnings yield. So P.E. ratio, I put a video out about this about a month ago. So I'm not going to go into too much depth, but essentially it is a ratio of price versus earnings. So how much an uh, investor is willing to pay for each dollar of earnings a company makes. And typically, an, uh, an value investor would want a P.E. ratio in the single digits and or at least less than half of what the industry standard is for any particular uh, uh, market segment. For example, Ford has a P.E. ratio around 10 or so, depending on the time of the year. But the automotive, domestic automotives for the United States average is about 20 or so. So that's a very good value bet. It's about half of what the industry as a whole is. Uh, and under other industries, for example, uh, aerospace, for example, that uh, particular uh, price to earnings ratio may be 30. So if you can find a company that has a PE ratio of 15, that is a very good value bet in that particular market segment. Basically, it's telling you that the company is likely undervalued compared to its peers. And the other metric is uh, earnings yield, excuse me, which essentially is telling investors a stock is able to generate a large amount of earnings relative to its share price. So you simply want that to be as high as possible, or the uh, inverse of that is uh, earnings multiple. Again, a little bit more sophisticated metric, uh, but you can take a look at each of these metrics on different websites uh, uh, to research the stocks, and these are basically reported out to you. So P.E. ratio and earnings yield are two different metrics that are taking a look at. And another metric that I'd like to uh, bring up with Wells Fargo and Company is a company that may be experiencing transient uh, downturn. Maybe there's some bad news that has come out about a company uh, or something uh, like a, a recall, for example, with Ford, something that will impact the company in the short term and may affect its price, but in the long term really will have minimal impact of anything. And a great example of that is Wells Fargo and Company. As you guys remember, had a little bit of controversy with uh, the opening of fake accounts on its uh, uh, financial services wing, which really made the price uh, of the stock go down quite dramatically here. You can see here from about 5% up, it went to 8% uh, down. So a swing, quite dramatic swing there, about 13% or so. But again, that was sort of a transient uh, uh, event for the company. It had a lot of bad press. And because of that, the price of the stock went down. But you can see here, it rebounded quite nicely here. And it's actually up quite a bit since that particular downturn. So this would be a good value investing event here. So the company has some... Uh, transient bad news that really doesn't affect the company as a whole in the long term the price of the stock will go down quite considerably if you could buy in this area here you can see that it would have a dramatic uptick here and it can uh, magnify the return of your investment here so that's what the value investing is all about so not only are you taking a look at some of the basic metrics PE ratio earnings yield but also you can trade around bad events in the company, whether that may be like, for example, Ford with a uh, auto recall, very transient event, an otherwise stable company. It could be like Wells Fargo, for example, having some bad press, but then rebounding quite dramatically here. So a little bit different for each company, uh, but for a lot of companies, investors do get a little bit spooked here and has uh, one of the great investors, Warren Buffett always says, is that when others are scared, you should be basically buying and when others are buying you should be scared so kind of the opposite of the market so when a company is dramatically losing value in the share price when there's not a lot of long-term uh, dis uh, disruption in its uh, earnings potential or its company operations it's a great time to buy a company so the same thing can be said for Ford uh, it's having or will have a very 
uh, disappointing 2017, but really the company is investing in a number of different uh, technologies. It's also opening uh, a lot of new uh, operations within the United States. So the company is not a dying company. It's having a lot of investment going on, even though that the 2017 forecast is going to look pretty shaky, it's gonna be disappointing. The long-term outlook of the company is very good. So the same thing about uh, value investing can be applied here, again, to Wells Fargo. Some bad news, dropped the price of the stock, and it rebounded quite dramatically here, much more than even what the uh, stock was trading at before that event. So a little bit of value investing uh, talk here, describing some of the basic metrics and also trading around some uh, bad news in the press or with a company that does not affect its long-term earnings potential is a great time uh, to buy a stock. You can basically buy a stock at discount. So let me know what you guys think about those different strategies, especially the strategy about buying a quality company when it's going through a transient event. Uh, uh, a story that's notable in the news or similar event that really depresses the price of the stock in the short term but the long term really doesn't have any impact and if you can buy in this particular area here when it's down you can dramatically accelerate and uh, magnify your return so a little bit about value investing let me know what you guys think about value value investing and kind of with that I'll end the video as always if you enjoyed my videos feel free to like share and subscribe and until next video we'll see you then